This is Kan Zenshu, the podcast, episode 337 for the week of June 23rd, 2013. What up, hey Alice? Welcome to Kanz and Shu, the podcast, an extension of the all-encompassing Dragon Ball fan site, Kanz and Shu. We join you each week to cover anything and everything Dragon Ball in hopes of enlightening and a little bit of entertainment. Entertaining. My name is Mike Vegito EX, and joining me across the internet, back from an Anpanman, what was it, an exhibit, a museum? <laughs> Julian. It's a combination museum and shopping mall thingy. Now, was this for you, or was it for the daughter? It's for my daughter. Or both? Well, really for my daughter. Okay. There, there was copious amounts of Ryusei Nakao and yeah. um, Hiro Mitsuru, but also lots of screaming kids running around, and my daughter cried for a little while. Oh, no. After after she got tired and didn't want to play anymore. Because it's a, a series that really has no presence over here in North America, can you tell people what Anpan Man is? So Anpan Man is a superhero created by a kindly baker, uh, Uncle Jam, who is voiced by um, the GT voice of Kame Senin, actually. Oh, and right. Uh, I... Kawa? Not Aikawa. Aikawa was only the 10th anniversary movie. Oh, okay. Right, right. Man, we're yeah, not doing I'm, so well here. I'm, I'm blanking on his name, too. I don't feel too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. But anyway, he's made of anpan, which is this bread roll filled with sweet azuki bean paste. And he goes around saving people from hunger and other predicaments, as well as fighting against the evil Baikinman, which is germ man, who is an alien from another planet who wants to see the Earth turned into a world full of germs and dirt and stuff. Why? I don't know. Because he's evil. That's why. It sounds exciting. It's a very young kids kind of franchise. Oh, yes. And every episode ends the same way with Baikinman hit by the Anpanch and flying off into the air. The bye bye Keen. And Gotcha. So for you, it's all about hearing Nakao and some of uh, old favorites and being able to share that with your daughter. Yes, but I'm not sure if it's worth 1,500 yen for each person over the age of one. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And everything inside is ludicrously expensive. And, you know, I was hoping it'd be a little more interactive than it was. It's mostly a bunch of things where they go around and peek out of windows and things and this excuse for parents to take pictures really more than anything else oh, they totally got you man you're yes. part of the system all right well i'm glad you had a good time i'm gonna rope you back in talk about dragon ball with me this episode dude this episode it's, it's uh it's one of those amalgamation episodes i've actually already recorded part of the news one of the big news pieces this week is about the new video game battle of z so to start off the news segment in a little bit our buddy joe walker space cop is going to talk about that with me for like 20 25 minutes because kind of big thing but other than that julian you and i are going to talk about the rest of the news and then in lieu of a normal topic we're actually going to talk a little bit about some of the content we've been posting on the site lately because you're i don't want to say you're in madman land again a la battle of gods because that was on a different plane altogether oh god but <laughs> you have done a lot of translation work recently that we've been trying to catch up on and between you and heath and myself uh jake not so much lately he's busy defending us off in space right now but uh we've done a lot of work that we kind of want to share with you if you haven't had a chance to check it out so uh you and i will do a little focus on that and it's kind of an episode how's that sound sounds good to me all right so let's uh go over to the news right now julian you're gonna go away for a bit and then you'll come back oh, okay First bit of news we're going to cover this week is one of the significant ones. I say that because we have not really had a new video game for Dragon Ball in about two years. So because no one else on the show can talk about video games with me, dragging people in, joining me, Mr. Joe Walker, the space coppa himself. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. Good to be back. Uh, Dragon Ball video games, man. Dragon Ball video games indeed, sir. So we have Battle of Z. I am very excited for... Finally, I've been waiting years for the one Nekomaji named Z to star in his own video game. So excited. 
Oh man, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> You're gonna fight <laughs> rabbits, and Boo's gonna show up, and Spit's gonna explode. This is the best game that we've ever seen, right? I have not even played it, but I already know that it blows everything else away. So another Dragon Ball Z fighting game. Yeah, pretty much. Another year comes, <laughs> another year goes. Uh, but this is very new, very different. Maybe not so much in a variety of ways. So I, I guess we'll start at the beginning, and that's last year was kind of this off year. The two games we got got were Dragon Ball Z for Kinect and the Budokai HD collection. Now, both of those were obviously ports slash upgrades of previously existing material in weird ways. What did you do last year with Dragon Ball? Uh, as far as Dragon Ball games go, uh, nothing. Nothing. I, I thought about getting Dragon Ball for Connect just to get the episode of Bardock. Right, right. I already, I already got the episode of, uh, what was it, V-Jump that had the DVD packed in. Oh, so. you're one of the smart people. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, that can't be said very often, but in this case it works. So uh, I actually took last year off, which was kind of nice. Uh, I think you and a lot of other people did. So so it was definitely a strange year because honestly, it was the first year since 2002 that we didn't have. This is October, November. This is the new fighting game for the franchise, whether it's a sequel or a new or quasi sequel. It was just nothing. I can't imagine like all the people who would wander into their GameStops and Walmarts hungrily and be like, where is it? What? what it, it, it's time. It's supposed to be here. <laughs> like it's mid November. They're just walking around in this daze, unable to comprehend why there's not a new Dragon Ball game there. I wonder what they did with themselves. <laughs> they probably bought Naruto last year. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> so here we are. We have a new game. This is Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. Before we go any further, I have to get your thoughts on the title of the game. This is, I think I mentioned this with Mary recently, where she threw out the word nitpick, and I'm like, no, that's good. That's what we're here for. We're the types of fans. This is what we dive into. Nitpicking is good. I feel like criticizing the title of this game almost borders past the point of me being acceptable with nitpicking, but we have to do it. We have to do it. Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. Your thoughts? See, I thought that Ultimate Tenkaichi was the stupidest name that could ever be imagined because it just basically means Ultimate World's Best. <laughs> right. But someone must have been listening to me because they outdid themselves. <laughs> they totally like, did. Because it's not even Dragon Ball Battle of Z. It's right. Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. I've seen so many people toss it around. Like, did they throw in an extra Z? Because this is... Ca nope, it's Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. It's like when they were buying their game titles at Namco Bandai, they must have had a surplus of the letter Z and say, well, we got to stick these somewhere. Uh, all right. Well, here's the interesting thing. Uh, finally, for the first time since... The Raging Blast games, and that was kind of this weird thing. Japan's getting the same title that we're getting. That's the same title that Europe's getting, finally. I wonder if they think it's stupid, too. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> all right, so let's move beyond the title. Uh, so the way that this always works is Shueisha has a grand plan to unveil things. This time around, it was going to be in the August issue of V-Jump. V-Jump, if you don't know, Shueisha's video game-focused magazine comes out on the 21st of every month, dated two months ahead of time. So June 21st, the August 2013 issue was coming out. And of course, being the internet, things get leaked and scanned and tossed around. So we knew about two days early this was coming. And then on top of that, the next week's, uh, almost, I think, five days ahead of time, Weekly Shonen Jump, I think it was issue number 30 for this year, also had a single page about it that had a lot of information in it. So we got all of this info. And by the time we had everything done, it was like a day before it was set to go live in the magazine. But there is a larger rollout plan. Honestly, the, the most coordinated I've seen in years. Uh, let's start with all of the initial stuff that came out from V-Jump and Weekly Jump. We got the title. We got a little bit of information. Uh, Julian really dove in here and gave us everything that we could get. There are some new moves like the Synchro Rush, the Meteor Chain, and I know you going back, Meteo and Meteor, those words are very familiar to Dragon Ball video games, uh, and Revive Soul. And he's got a little bit of a breakdown there if you want to read the update on the page. But the big stuff here is up to four people can play cooperatively and up to eight people can play in a battle royale, and that includes online play. Now, like the rest of us, when you were reading this, did you immediately think, oh, Zenkai Battle Royale? I actually was thinking, oh man, this could be like an HD version of Legends, and that would be awesome. Right, I saw you say that, and immediately I jumped... I'm like, it's 2005. What's going on? Because when we all saw Sparking for the first time, it seemed like, oh my God, we're finally going to get Legends in, not HD at the time, but the <laughs> next generation. So what gave you Legends before it, uh, 
Zenkai Battle Royale came to mind. <laughs> Honestly, it's that I'm not really familiar with Zenkai Battle Royale. Okay. It's after uh, the three Budokai games came out. Yep. And I kind of thought that they were all largely similar. I'm like, okay, I think I'm done for a while. I'm just going to go be an old curmudgeon old man and play Super Butoden for a while. <laughs> right. Okay, then. So, uh, and I mean, just having that many characters on screen at once. I mean, when's the last time we had that? Other than Zenkai Battle Royale in Japanese arcades, which none of us have played, was Legends on the PS1 and Saturn. So I can totally see you going back to that time. Is that something you would be looking forward to? I think so. Uh, Legends, it's not, it's not perfect. It definitely has its flaws, but it's... It's definitely the most unique Dragon Ball quote unquote fighting game there's been. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's, you know, the way they did it, like the whole like fishbowl aspect and you can go anywhere and you've got, you know, three on three fights and the momentum meter was actually my favorite part. Of mm-hmm. it. Yeah, the tug of war going on where there's not a set life bars. You can tides can change at any time in that game. Right. And it's not only that there hasn't been another Dragon Ball game like that. I can't even think of any other game that's been like that. So even though it wasn't fantastic, it's still I, I still think of it fondly because it's so unique. There's n- never been anything else like it. Yeah, totally. So we start getting this initial information and from my perspective I'm really confused because I'm thinking all right Zenkai Battle Royale has been in Japanese arcades for what two years at this point and every year we're like okay this is going to be the year they announce a home port it's based on PS3 architecture it's an easy home port why aren't they doing why aren't they just porting this and we get this announcement it's like oh okay fine wait no no there's no mention of Zenkai Battle Royale anywhere anywhere in here at all and i did a little screenshot comparison here because when zenkai battle royale got that super saiyan awakening update it wasn't just that they added the super saiyan forms for a bunch of characters there's also some story mode stuff put in into this arcade version of the game so i'm looking at this going why are you guys developing what appear to be two separate versions of multiplayer, team-focused, online Dragon Ball brawling? I, I kind of don't get the thought process here. What do you think? It could just be so then they can do minimal effort to do two things with different names, so they kind of have two separate products. Yeah. So then they could say, oh, if you like Zenkai Battle Royale, then you'll really like this rather than, you know, you spend all your time at the arcades playing this game. Now play it at home, which is going to kind of cut into their arcade profits, I imagine. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how the Japanese arcade business works. (laughs) I know. It's a different world over there where they still have arcades and play. They're so lucky. (laughs) All right. So then we kind of got to the 21st. And this is what I was talking about with the coordinated rollout of everything. Japan puts up a site which is actually bilingual it's japanese and english and because europe is ahead of us in terms of time europe's got the official press release the announcement out there yep game's coming out over here and then finally a couple hours later about 1 p.m on the 21st namka Bandai us uh coming to north america latin america and brazil very interesting what's funny is my email box is hysterical right before the dragon ball one was an announcement from namka Bandai of a saint seiya game and they're all excited about yes we're bringing it to latin america <laughs> like <laughs> of course. Like, if you're going to announce a Saint Seiya game, you don't say, oh, we're bringing it out. You say, we're bringing it out in Latin America. That's the way you publicize that game. <laughs> so they're right on the mark there. Uh, so, yeah, everyone is getting this game at some point. Which is good. It is good. I, I, I think. <laughs> we'll see how the game is. <laughs> I mean, all of the releases since this big revival back in 2001, 2002 have been mostly simultaneous. There was the the three Budokai games. We actually got them, I don't want to say significantly earlier than Japan, but we did get them earlier. And then the Sparking games came out in Japan first, but we were only like a month or so behind at that point. But then after that, like the Raging Blast games, it's only about a week difference. They're mostly simultaneous. It seems like we're going to be mostly simultaneous again with uh, Battle of Z here. So let's jump over to the trailer now. Checked out some footage of this. Now that you've kind of heard about it, read about it, and even watched this first video, what kind of vibes are you getting from it? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to kind of keep my expectations low because I mean, Safe you know, with I, was, I was on when we were talking about Ultimate Blast, Ultimate Tenkaichi. Yep. The apologist. Even though I was one of the few people who had a decent time with it, I mean, it wasn't anything groundbreaking. And there's certain things that I would really like to see from a Dragon Ball game that I just, I really don't want to get my hopes up until the game is actually out. It's, it's like the Sonic cycle. It is. It's like they announce a new Sonic the Hedgehog game. Everybody's like, oh, this one's going to be different. Finally, Sonic's back. And then the game comes out and then it's not that good. And then the cycle starts anew. 
I got to tell you, it is uh, myself and Super Saiyan Prime on our forum. We actually put together a Dragon Ball cycle outline and image that I'm trying to uh, kind of make into a nicer looking image, too. <laughs> it it, it kind of fits. It and sadly it, works really well. <laughs> I mean, it's not that the Dragon Ball games have been bad for me. They've just been largely similar, which is kind of why after the Budokai games came out, I mean, I got was... Uh, what were they called when they came out here? What was it? Um, The series that came out after Budokai. Oh, the Sparking Games. They came out as Budokai Tenkaichi here. Yes, that other stupid name. Um, <laughs> right. I, got, I got the first one of those. I'm like, eh, you know, I, th- I think I'm kind of done with these for a little while. So until I actually play one that really knocks it out of the park for me, I think I'm just going to go into every game with uh, cautious optimism. Okay, that's the uh, key catchphrase of <laughs> the entire Konzenshu outlook on Dragon Ball video games. So, I mean, we're talking about... Up to eight players simultaneous online fighting. We're getting a 360 PS3 and Vita release. Uh, I do want to note there, they kind of slipped this in the press release. The Vita release will be digital only in North America. So if you're going to pick it up that way, you will be buying online only. So thoughts on any of that? I mean, they've all been similar one-on-one fighting games. Is the online multiplayer or the up to eight players uh, kind of fighting against your cautious optimism it is and i'm not really a big online gamer it's not really unless i'm playing with actual friends and not strangers yep uh you know it's not really for me but definitely that's what's kind of got me excited about it like oh man i could get on with my friends and we could all play this game together rather than it being like okay, well, now I'm Goku and you're Vegeta and let's do the same thing that we've done in every other Dragon Ball game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, New developers. This is probably the most significant thing. I was not expecting this. Honestly, I was expecting Spike to just whatever the next thing they're going to do. Great. But the developer this time around, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm assuming it's Art Dink. I guess they've done some Gundam games and even some Macross games. So they're uh, into this world of uh, larger than life characters battling against each other. Does the prospect of a new developer also battle against your cautious optimism. It does. And I mean, I've been playing games for for many, many years and you see a lot of franchises that just kind of get washed up. And I think it's because you have the same developer making the same game over and over and over again. And I think people who create things for a living need to do new things. Otherwise they get bored and their output isn't as good as it could be. Right. So I think having someone who's new to the franchise, you know, taking this whole new take on the style of game and not just kind of rehashing what we've had before. I think that kind of sets us up as well as any other Dragon Ball game has been to be something pretty great. I I think they're really promoting this. I mean, every year it's always, oh, a new experience you've never had before and all the general terms, mostly in Japanese, they toss out there. This one, it feels a little different. I don't know if it's, it's going to be a combination of all these things, the simultaneous announcement worldwide about all this. Did you notice at the end of the trailer, all the credits, the production credits are kind of in there. They're all in English. They're listing so many people involved in this. We, we never see anything like that. If anything, we see Daisuke Uchiyama, who I think is one of the uh, kind of producers at Namco Bandai for the series, but they listed a whole bunch of names. I'm thinking, hmm, are they that sure about themselves that they're already tossing this much information i mean every year it's always like is spike developing this game and then about three or four months later yes yes uh spike's logo is kind of down the corner of a website but this is here's everything here we go and that feels really different to me yeah i guess it is showing quite a lot of confidence which could be a good thing yeah uh i don't know i don't really have a whole lot of thoughts on that aspect of it i all right I, it's interesting but i'm not really sure what it means yet so i'm gonna ask you as the wii u owner i've seen a lot of people tossing this out there criticizing it i wonder how many of them actually own a wii u what do you think about the uh announcement for the current gen platforms sans wii u i mean i think it's a bummer because you know they had games like i mean i i'm not a call of duty player but from what i understand the, the last call of duty that came out on wii u was pretty much on par with the other consoles so I imagine it would have been minimal effort to make a Wii U version, but there's this whole vicious cycle where it's like, okay, well, we're not going to put the game out on Wii U because there's not enough people and then no people buy the Wii U because they're not putting games out for it. So it's just, it's kind of a self-perpetuating problem. Yeah. Dragon Ball video games have had weird histories on Nintendo platforms after uh, 2001 onward. I mean, you think about the Budokai games, one and two came out on GameCube, three skipped it, and then we jumped over to the Sparking series. Sparking one was only PS2, but then Sparking Neo and Sparking Meteor came out on the Wii, and then it fell away for a while, and we've gotten a bunch of DS games, and now Heroes is totally racking up the numbers on the 3DS, but yeah, kind of curious that Wii U is skipping out here. It's, uh, you think it's just an install-based problem? Not gonna 
make the effort. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And it's kind of a shame because I imagine there's lots of people that would be interested in it. And I imagine there's a lot of overlap between people who got a Wii U who missed out on the PS3 and the 360. Mm-hmm. They were just kind of upgrading from the Wii because they're Nintendo fans yep. who want to play these Dragon Ball games and they haven't had a chance. So it's kind of a shame. Right. The last they played would have been Meteor, which was, was that 2007? Something like that. So, yeah. I mean, it's been quite a long time. Hopefully they have picked up a handheld along the way and <laughs> were able to enjoy some Dragon Ball. Yeah. Because didn't they also announce a Dragon Ball game when the 3DS was revealed and we haven't had anything yet well i have to imagine that turned into heroes ultimate mission on the 3ds rather than a platformer or a fighting game or something like that right and that doesn't do me any good either no (laughs) not at all (laughs) so here we are in the usual cycle we're actually a month late from what we normally expect april may here we are kind of end of june do you see this as being a standard november release or would the launch of the new consoles and everything else going on that time of year totally trample this. You think they're going to hold on to it for quarter one, 2014? I think we'll still see it as a holiday release. You do? Because, yeah, I mean, we are getting the new consoles this holiday, but they're they're pretty expensive. And I mean, you know, it's what, $400 for the PS4, 500 for the Xbox One. And I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of parents that are going to be willing out or willing to run out and spend that kind of money on a new video game console. So it'll be, okay, well, what games can I get for the one he already has for Christmas? Is this the kind of franchise that's kind of immune to console launches and everything else going on? The people that are going to buy it are going to buy it anyway? I think so. I I think that Dragon Ball video games, they kind of have a built-in audience that's not going to expand any larger than what it already is. Yeah, yeah. So, and those people who are going to buy it already have the Xbox 360 or the PS3, so they're all set. You know, that's really weird because I've seen, it's totally anecdotal, but I've seen so many people say, I actually discovered Dragon Ball through video games and this was kind of in the Budokai 2 into 3 era I think those games were doing so well and were being critically received well enough that all the kids at that age were just getting their friends playing and exposed to the series that way I don't know that we have anything like that anymore I didn't know that. that's actually super cool yeah isn't it I mean and then they go over to it's weird there's a couple people I know within our community that got to it from video games first and then like trying to go into the Funimation dub from there, it's it's just this weird thing where it's like the video game's more accurate than the dub was at that time, but all the voices were from that dub. So it's like this weird experience for them. I don't envy them in that position at all. I I can't even imagine the kinds of, you know, peaks and valleys and crazy things dub fans have had to go through. <laughs> no. All right, man. So this is the Dragon Ball cycle. We are at this Goku versus Vegeta, first screenshot. <laughs> Go from there. So I guess give me your uh, your final initial thoughts leading into Battle of Z. Uh, I mean, I've I've seen a little bit of the trailer. I've seen some of the screenshots and they don't, they look a little rough, but that's probably because there's so much action going on at the same time. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested to see what they do with this fresh take when they're kind of cutting away from the formula that was working and trying something new. And I think that, you know, getting a new developer in is the best time to do that so if i was going to rate my enthusiasm and my excitement on a scale of one to ten i'd say probably about a seven seven and a half right now really that's actually a little higher than i was expecting is it the new developer that's kind of chipping the scales there it is because i mean i was really excited when i saw you know the four on four and that aspect and it reminded me of legends and i was like that would be great if that's what it was but i'm not going to expect it and then i saw that a new developer was going to be bringing uh going to be brought in to do it I was like, okay, well, maybe they are going to be willing to try something new this time. So maybe it will be something close to what I'm hoping for. I think that would be good if today's generation of fans can have their legends where it's a a gameplay experience that's unlike anything they've had before game. I I think that'd be great. It it would need a totally new style of soundtrack. As I know, you you know, the legends music, it was so different from everything else at the time. What do you think? What do you think about the musical experience going into Battle of Z. I mean, all the Japanese games up till now, the Sparking series, the Raging Blast games in Japan, it was all the Kikuchi music, and we get all the replacement nonsense. Is uh, a total fresh new soundtrack the best way to go at this point? I think so. Um, I mean, geez, what's Kenji Yamamoto up to right now? Somebody find him. (laughs) Sleeping on someone's (laughs) dirty floor somewhere, I hope. Yeah, I think a a new fresh soundtrack to kind of give the game its own identity when you're breaking away from everything that they've been doing the past few years I think would be great because you've got a new developer new gameplay style new music give it its own unique identity its own flavor Mm, new identity I think that's a good way to put it you think having the inclusion from Battle of Gods obviously we have 
Super Saiyan God Goku on the cover here. Is that going to help too? I think so, especially with the North American audience, because there's plenty of people who are aware of it that are probably hungry to see more from the movie. So I think that that will sell to... uh to a North American audience. Oh, totally. And, you know, I look in the other corners of the internet and people are like, why are they, Why is Kaioken on the cover here? Like, people have no <laughs> idea. They, they don't know. They know that this movie exists. But we live in this other universe from them where we just know everything. We've seen everything. And... They have no idea. Super Saiyan God. See, I was actually, pre- I was trying to stay completely spoiler free from the movie. You can, you can. But, well, I, I almost was. And then on Konzenshu, there was a screenshot. That said, <laughs> oh, look, Super Saiyan God Goku coming to Zenkai Battle Royale. And I was like, well, <laughs> but then a couple months later at Anime Boston, I wound up buying a uh, Super Saiyan God action figure. So it's all good. There you go. <laughs> what are we going to do? Not report the news? Well, you know, I don't know. You should tailor everything that you do to my needs and expectations. All right, I'll get right on that. All right, man. So we've talked a little bit about a game where we have a trailer and box art, and that's about it. Amazing how that works. Uh, you know, it's it's about being thorough. All right, so you're going to come back and talk about this game with me when it comes out. Absolutely. All right, you want to plug anything, you have an opportunity. You have, I'm going to give you exactly 10 seconds. Go. Oh, man. Okay, you can follow me on Twitter at Space Kappa. It's just like it's uh, sounds, I guess. But then I also have a retro video game show on YouTube called Backlog. You can check out my YouTube channel. All right. YouTube. That's like 10 com. seconds, but you can keep talking. Ah. No, I'll keep going. It's fine. All right. Uh, it's youtube.com slash PK blogging. P K B L O G G I N. Yep. Check it out. Watch the 32X video. Yeah. I did a 32X video and I had good things to say and everybody seemed to really like that. We are 32X brothers in arms now. Well, you know, we're still fighting the good fight. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you much. All right. Thanks. All right, Julian, we're back. The first news story. This was, I don't know, man. How do you feel about Walmart always leaking stuff? I don't know. I suppose it makes up for selling guns to anybody who comes in. Oh, well, geez. no, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't Julian's getting political. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I, I won't. Well, so it, it makes up for the censored CDs. Okay. okay, there you go. So Walmart, uh, back in, I guess it was 2009, that sounds right, let's go refer, but yes, it was 2009, because we wrote that in the news update on the site. This is the power of having a site that goes back to 1998, is you can just link to every news story that's ever happened. It's great. Anyway, so back then, Walmart was the one who leaked the fact that Funimation was going to be releasing the blue season bricks for the first Dragon Ball TV series. That was a whole thing, because first 13 episodes never released on Cut Bilingual. Blah, 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 blah. Shadow Dude 112 on our forum kind of dug up a couple new listings on Walmart's website. Two DVDs coming from Funimation Dragon Ball Z Best of Goku and Best of Vegeta. These two DVDs, they are listed at $7.50 each, but being Walmart, they got them for just under six and a half there. These are coming October 13th. That was all there was until a couple days later when Walmart updated with box art for both of these. So it's the the top seven fan favorite fights for each of these kind of budget priced DVDs. Uh, Julian, yeah. anime, particularly over here, and after I wrote this update, I remembered it and a bunch of other people remembered it. Pokemon did get some of these like best of Pikachu DVDs over here, those kind of things. Most anime series don't get that. But most anime series aren't Dragon Ball. So do you think this is a, a good approach for Funimation to take in 2013? It's a weird year. We have the Rock the Dragon set coming out. And now we've got these kind of best of best fights compilations coming out. Is this all that's left for Funimation right now? Um, well, you know, I think they have put out the series so many times. That and hold on to that. We'll get back to yes. that momentarily. <laughs> Obviously, there comes a point where... There's not much they can do to rope in somebody who wants to see the whole series because they probably have it by now. Right. Or you're not willing to commit the, I don't, I don't want to say hundreds of dollars because the orange bricks are pretty cheap right now, but it's a little, somewhat of an investment. It's going to cost you at least a hundred bucks to get the whole series. Yeah. But, you know, it's the point where maybe there are some people out there who like highlights, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Although I, I did see somebody on the forums, I think, comment about the, the best of Vegeta is that even on the cover is a, a fight where that he loses. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, are there many times that Vegeta wins? 
technically really. he sort of beats Goku both times that he and Goku fight, but the circumstances around both of those fights are super weird. Yeah. You know, is it a draw? Did he technically lose even though he won the fight? I don't know. All right. So he beat Kui, Tidoria, and Zarbon. That's true. And, well, I guess he killed the Gerd. Yes. He finished off Raccoon, but he totally lost to Raccoon. Yes. And he, he killed somebody else. Was it Jis? Uh, yes, he killed Jis. Yep. And he killed a bunch of spectators at the Tenkaichi. <laughs> <laughs> We're really struggling for best of Vegeta fights here. A lot of these are he delivered the final blow after Goku did all the work. Yeah. Or, or, or just killed people who were <laughs> right <laughs> they couldn't fight back those poor namekian villagers that's, well, that's true all the namekians let's move on let's talk about dragon ball heroes we got a bunch of heroes this episode uh i'll do this one and you'll take more heroes news in a little bit because we just updated on that but uh, ultimate mission still hanging in on the charts dipped a little bit this last week it's 16th week since release another 4707 copies between june 10th and june 16th there's nothing else for us to say right now we say it Every week at this point, hanging in there, doing well. No international release announced. The game is region locked. Have fun, right? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Julian, why don't you give us a little Battle of Gods news update? Good on you international folks, right? A uh, great time to be outside the English-speaking world if you're looking forward to Battle of Gods, because the next up is the Philippines, which, according to SM Cinema on their Twitter and Facebook pages, will be coming to the Philippines on August 14th. I believe I've also heard something about it going to Hong Kong fairly soon, but unfortunately I don't read Chinese. Yes, I know. We do need to catch up on that one. We're going to have to get a native speaker to confirm what things are said there. But yeah, good on the Philippines, though. Yeah, I mean, it's really starting to make its way around the world, and it feels pretty much inevitable yeah. that Battle of Gods is going to make it over there where you my <laughs> over are. there <laughs> it's that vague japanese point. here there slightly far and then there slightly further away from that yes i remember grammar well you know in terms of the japanese way of thinking it's japan and everything else and everything else yeah yeah i i agree it's pretty inevitable i think we're gonna get it at some point um at this point not the summer but uh, like everyone else here, maybe late summer into the fall. But then again, there's still no word. Is it because North America is the largest problem to deal with getting things all sorted out? I don't know. Could be. It could just be that Fox complicates matters. Just dragging their heels, maybe. Who knows? Yes. Because, you know, they tried going it by themselves last time and doing what they thought would be a good movie and fans generally disagreed <laughs> right i think we disagreed as well i don't know i i think uh, at the time it was daisenshu ex but uh, the entire kanzenshu family i think if you go back and listen to our take yours after the japanese release and ours collectively after the north american release i don't think we all hated it like rampage with torches in the street kind of well no it. well we didn't hate it I thought it was kind of so bad it was funny, but, um, you know, I think I thought it would work as a, an okay sort of low-budget kung fu movie if the Dragon Ball name was not attached. Right. But anyway, we're getting off the topic. Battle of Gods years ago. All right, so we'll move on. Uh, we were talking about Funimation just a minute ago. There was more Funimation news. This kind of popped out of nowhere, but I do understand where it's coming from. Now, Julian, if you remember those exciting six months when we had an announcement of the Dragon Ball Z TV series remastered on Blu-ray from Funimation, that was six months from announcement to cancellation slash hiatus. Uh, yeah. That was a weird time. Uh, they got yes. those two level sets out, one, 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 two. And then there were another two announced, planned, box art, everything that was never made it out. And uh, the the word at the time was, quote, Funimation will be reevaluating the current process and researching more efficient methods of restoration, end quote. And I think we all agreed at the time it was they were putting too much money into it compared to how many people were purchasing said product. So here comes Funimation this week with a survey out to fans. Hey, 
we're reconsidering doing a Blu-ray release of the Dragon Ball Z TV series. Answer a whole bunch of questions. Now, they did say flat out, we're going to do nine sets, so that would be similar to the Orange Bricks, and they even gave a cost, $44.98 MSRP, so it would obviously be cheaper if you order anywhere other than just, where can you even get MSRP? Suncoast doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, um, well, if you come to Japan, they generally well, sell suppose. things. <laughs> <laughs> other than Amazon Japan, you get nice discounts over there. Oh, yes, but to, to many many places in Japan always sell things for a list price. And it's like, what's the point of having Dang, stores? Get away with it. So anyway, Funimation is uh, reconsidering this. And this survey has a whole bunch of very specific options for you to choose from, including pictures showing what a 16 by 9 cropped version versus a full screen original 4 by 3 production looks like. Uh, so I'm hoping the Kanzenshu army is out in full force proclaiming their love and dedication for please don't remove 20% of my picture again. I'm yeah. hoping. I'm hoping. Come on. Come on, guys and gals. All Come of on. you. We, we live through the orange bricks. We're not going to live through it again, right? <laughs> no. Right? I've been saying this is such a weird year between the Rock the Dragon set and questions from Funimation about cropping again. It's like, what year is this? What is going on? So, Julian, I mean, being in Japan right now, do you really have much of a take or a care on this? Um, well, it'd be nice to see it in full screen that is four four by three full screen on Blu-ray, like it was before, before it got cancelled or something. But you know, I I don't know, I wouldn't No plans be... to purchase is what you're saying. Well, I suppose if I had the money, but you know, between getting nice things for my children and getting nice things for myself, my children tend tend to win out. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. So that's that's Funimation updates. Uh, I'll give you one more, and then Julian, I'm turning it over to you for V Jump updates. So this one is uh, nice for all you Canadian fans that could not make it down to Animazement for the amazing collection of guests. Uh, Anime Revolution up in Vancouver has announced that a one Mr. Toru Furia, the voice of Yamcha, and don't forget the voice of Puck from the Dragon Ball GT TV special. Everyone forgets him. I have not forgotten him. Uh, going up as a guest alongside him i wanted to note this and there's this tiniest little bit of dragon ball i could tie to this kape yamaguchi the japanese dub voice of son goku for dragon ball evolution <laughs> will also be attending as a guest of course the rest of us primarily know him as Usopp from one piece these days but that's a, a good duo of guests right man yeah and what else was kape yamaguchi was he Rama, he was uh, I think? ranma yes I mean, and um things. oh inuyasha there we go right Rumiko yeah takahashi back to <laughs> all back. the takahashi stuff yep <laughs> So uh, big time names there. And I know a lot of people have been saying Furia, he's uh, the man who does not age. He sounds exactly the same now as he did 30 years ago. It's frightening. Yes. Still what? Mobile Suit Gundam and uh -huh. yep. was it Sailor Moon and uh -huh. Saint Seiya and yep. other things I don't know. So Julian, speaking of picking things up over in Japan. V-Jump was this week, 21st of every month. You've already heard about all the Battle of Z stuff, so why don't you give us an update on uh, other things? Let's start with Zenkai Battle Royale, which apparently is not Battle of Z. Yes. Well, uh, you know, actually it's kind of funny because you have the two-page spread uh -huh. uh, for Battle of Z, and at the bottom on this little bar you have sort of, don't forget about me, uh, Super Saiyan Awakening for Zenkai Battle Royale, and this time we have Gotenks facing off against the pure Majin Buu. So the original, the thin, sort of uninhibited, extremely dangerous version. The one that actually Gotenks didn't fight against, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> he did not, right. But anyway, Gotenks has his Super Ghost Kamikaze attack, just like the series. And Buu has all sorts of interesting things to take advantage of his pink, soft bubble gum. He's got a soft body that allows for things like stretching his arms and rolling into a ball, gotcha. basically. That's all that's really there right now. I mean, it's just this tiny little tease about the two new characters coming. Yeah, it doesn't say when. You know, Zenkai Battle Royale is a thing, so I'm sure it'll show up sooner or later if it hasn't already i don't play so maybe it's already there i don't know it's not on the official website yet so whatever their plan is for it, it's gonna at least be at some point in the near future but not quite yet so there you go all right julian let's keep it going with uh video game news but this is the arcade version of dragon ball heroes it's i feel like it's been a little bit since we talked about the last galaxy mission but maybe it wasn't uh we got galaxy mission 9 coming up so beerus was in galaxy mission 7 and garlic jr was the main focus of galaxy mission 8 and now in galaxy mission 9 we have the 
artificial humans, gene zoning in as the main focus. So it introduces a lot of new stuff, actually. So the main mission for this particular version of Galaxy Mission presents you with two stages to start with. There's present and there's future. So in present, you have 16, 17, and 18, and Cell. So you f face off against them with your deck and your hero avatar. And if you beat them and beat the stage, you get a special support part that adds 2,000 battle power and 2,000 HP to your team in the second round. And then if you try the future stage, which is under the control of the artificial humans, you know, the bad future, you face off against the movie villains number 13, 14, and 15, uh, that's Dragon Ball Z movie 7, as well as number 17 and 18. And you get help from the future versions of both Gohan and Trunks. And if you win this stage, you receive special support parts that recover 25% of your team's key and adds two to your team's hero energy in the second round. And that's not all. But wait, there's more? If you beat both of these stages, you can access the Hell Stage, where you fight alongside Super Saiyan 3, Future Gohan, and Future Trunks to break out of Hell. Now, Julian, are, are we saying here now that there's a Super Saiyan 3 version of Future Gohan? That's what it said. I will double check just to be sure. Let me get out the magazine. Here you go, page 101. Son Gohan Mirai, Super Saiyajin 3. Trunks Mirai, Super Saiyajin 3. All right, that's very specific then. Yes. So, I think we have that settled. Okay, <laughs> good. Yes, so the Super Saiyan 3 versions of both Gohan and Trunks from the future to bust out of hell. Right, so, I mean, j just catching up with all the villains at this point so far, it's all of them. We've got the movie exclusive ones, we've got the ones from the TV series, and we've also got, what is it, Hellfighter 17 here from GT as well? Uh, yes, uh, new in part of Galaxy Mission 9 is... Uh, Super 17 card, which has some special features we'll get into in just a minute. Okay. Um, but yeah, they've really been sort of going through all of the series and, you know, everybody gets Super Saiyan 3. Right. <laughs> Even the future versions of the characters get Super Saiyan 3. Right. Trunks got it. Uh, man, I feel like that was years ago at this point. Was that part of the original run of Heroes? I feel like that was the third or fourth update to Heroes. Yeah. Uh, it Sounds might have right. been, but I don't want to go searching through our archives and <laughs> time know. again. And then, of course, before all that, from Dragon Battlers, we had Vegeta and Broly, all that stuff. So uh, we've yes. get, been getting many, many more. And now I guess it's future Gohan's turn. Yes. And so how much would you pay for all these updates? <laughs> right. Well, it's it's uh, 100, it 100 yen, yen to play? one play. Yeah. yeah. But wait. I'm waiting. There's more. <laughs> Tell me more. So, new with Galaxy Mission 9 is the Galaxy Mission series' first new hero av avatars. They have introduced three new artificial human-style hero avatars. There's Berserker type, which resembles uh, Cell Jr. with a red ribbon emblem on his chest. There's Elite type, which is dressed kind of like number 19 and number 20. And there is Hero type, which is a dead ringer for number 17, with no eyebrows. Right. Or very maybe cute. those are bright bones. But anyway, very cute, yes. And these actually have some interesting features if you use them in conjunction of the new card action ability for Galaxy Mission 9 Double. So depending on the type of your hero avatar, as well as your partners if you're playing together, you can combine them to add extra effects to the new card action ability for example, reducing your opponent's guard level or um, in, or in, or decreasing their level of key. So you can really lay on the, I don't know, I've, la I've lost my metaphors. <laughs> you can just really do a lot of damage, basically. Got it. So yeah, you've got eight new campaign cards for Galaxy Mission 9, chief among them being Super Number 17, but also uh, Cell Number 18... Uh, Young Trunks, Piccolo, Vegeta, Future Gohan, and Goku. And um, there's also a note about um, Dragon Ball Heroes tournaments coming up. The Kanto area tournament will be held, actually, I guess it was held today, uh, June 23rd, at the Eon Lake Town Kaze. 
And I don't actually know where that is. I think it's uh, directly west of Cerulean City. Um, sounds good to me. Uh, anyway, I'm just reading out of the magazine at this point. So feel free right, well, to stop me. <laughs> this stuff, I don't think anyone uh, listening in English can do a whole lot about in terms of these tournaments. But uh, you do have a couple notes here that V-Jump next month and the upcoming Psycho Jump are going to have some extra cards for you. Yes. So included in uh, the next V-Jump is a card, but we don't know what it's going to be yet. It's going to be a special card. Yay. Yes, but the upcoming issue of Psycho Jump, due out on July 4th, is going to have Super Saiyan Vegeta. Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. There we go. I can finally spit it out uh, as a special one, including an attack called Garlic Blazer, which I guess is a sequel to his Garlic Hole from mm-hmm. the Saiyan arc. As well as card action ability Z from Galaxy Mission. From a previous Galaxy Mission. Yes. I, I, if you can't tell at this point, I don't actually play the game. So I'm just telling you what's in the magazine. As far as I'm concerned, these are just words <laughs> on a page. <laughs> we're just saying words. We can't actually comprehend anything that we're saying right now. Yes. I get kind of the sense of these things because it's similar to other card games of similar nature. But like the fine points, it's... I don't know. Yeah, I think it's Galaxy Mission 7. Okay. Anyway, moving on. We haven't actually put anything else on the site yet, but uh, recently confirmed as joining J-Star's Victory Versus, the oh, right. cross series thing video game for the 45th anniversary of Shonen Jump, Ichigo Kurosaki and Himura Kenshin. And I know that really bothers you that I'm putting the names both ways. <laughs> I know. I, I understand the logic behind them, but that's also specifically why I use first names only. When uh, I did note this in a previous update that was not related to um, J-Stars, so we, we kind of noted it. But Yes, yes. Well, Kenshin was technically, well, would have been born before the major restoration, which is yeah. why. Yes. But anyway, it introduces a little bit about the style of play and how there's sort of ranged attacks and attacks that affect a certain area. And it looks like the main sort of battle is going to be two on two. Right, I don't right. think it we've covered that, way, that yeah. before. Um, so I don't know. It's a two-page spread that's got some information, and you'll probably be hearing more about it once we put together an actual update on the site. It's not a lot of new information, but, you know... It's probably worth an update since it's got pretty pictures. Let's talk about some site stuff. Julian, let's jump back pretty much to the beginning of June. I kind of want to recap all the cool stuff we've been doing this month. So some of the earliest June stuff we put up, and we're going to talk super in-depth about them. I kind of want to tease these things and have people go read them on their own. But Julian, the full-color comics for the Frieza arc, there were five volumes. They all came out on the same day. The first three didn't really have anything of interest, but then four and five had some good content in them. Yeah, so there was this two-part interview with Akira Toriyama all about Battle of Gods. And he's also been interviewed about Battle of Gods in V-Jump, in the official movie guide, in the theatrical program, you know, a lot of places. But there's actually some pretty specific information in the full-color comics that I kind of wish I'd known about when we went over some of the stuff that was left out of the films, if you will. right, like early drafts and those early ideas. Well, I can tell you that I have gone back to the Battle of God's page and added those in, so it's at least all in a written form, one location kind of thing. Oh, that's good. Yes. Well, you are on top of things, and I appreciate that. (laughs) So, but I really had a lot of fun going through these interviews and getting them out, which is why I was managing to be able to do it in spite of not really having things slow down at work. But yeah, it's two very insightful interviews about the process of making the movie and some mm, some footnotes provided by the book itself that were maybe not necessary. But I suppose for younger fans, it might have been useful. What I actually like about these two is, uh, yeah, there's all the Battle of God stuff, but then there's that bonus corner at the bottom, the Q&As that are... Oh, yeah. Mm, Completely unrelated to Battle of Gods, just general Dragon Ball stuff. And I like the, is it true that Goku's tail was a nuisance? Just fun questions like that that they can dive into. Yeah, and it's actually funny because it's some things that we really kind of haven't heard before, although they do certainly fit his character. Yeah. Um, just so making up names on the spot for technique. <laughs> Or the reason that Super Saiyan God is red. And also, um, oh, the hair, the secrets behind Goku's hairstyle. 
all all brilliant. So go read them. Yes, definitely cool. go check them out. So they're over in the translation section. Uh, these in particular are not under Battle of Gods because we do have a full color comic section of translations because the Cyan Arc volumes had a couple Q and A's in there, even though those were mostly Battle of Gods related as well. Our eventual plan for the translation section, since it just gets bigger and bigger is to sort of dynamically tag things so if you bring up a certain tag you just see everything related to a certain topic right. or person or translator even i don't know but we'll get there uh, we, we need time <laughs> <laughs> and this is still there's a never-ending supply of things to actually translate such as some older material here uh julian the adventure special the book and special this was was it the first guidebook ever released for the series yeah it basically was i I think it does predate the Daimao Fukatsu game guide, which also includes a Toriyama interview, which I will eventually translate. Oh, okay. So I think this does probably count as the first specific Dragon Ball guidebook, uh, at least for the manga itself. Right. It's very cool. It's got a lot of Toriyama insight and extra random answers and questions. Some of the material in here we've used in panels and other stuff over the years, such as uh, Lanfan's husband being named Trunks, stuff like that. Yeah. And it's sort of interesting. You kind of get this sort of working image of the way he envisioned the series at the time, which obviously changed as it went on. But things like, well, why does Goku have a tail? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's an ancestral throwback kind of a, there is a technical term for that in science of genetics, and I don't know what it is. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, it's a fun interview. He's surprisingly candid about his, um, I don't know, being a pervert, I guess you could say. Right, he's kind of reveling in just how amazing of a pervert he is. Yes, but you do have to keep in mind that this is kind of a tongue-in-cheek interview, and also that his daughter was not born for another couple of years. <laughs> right. So it's not quite as creepy as it may seem at a couple points so that answer may change at some point in the future yes. from when this took place but uh this was up for a little while at kanzentai before we merged last year but uh it's back up it's um got a new coat of paint and it's pretty cool so check it out right and uh i mean that's the q a session from it but i don't think any of us ever had an overview page for the book so now you can oh see yeah it. All the content that's actually in there. And uh, I've seen this pop up on eBay every once in a while. It's usually around 40 or 50 bucks because it is kind of an uh, older piece of Dragon Ball history. But this is still a yeah. book that you can track down and check out. Yeah, well, the, the difficult thing about it is that it's not, well, it's a book, but it's not a book book. It's what's in Japan called a MOOC. Yes, I know. It's like this larger magazine style book. Yes, it's a magazine. It's not a real book. It's sold on newsstands and generally when its time is up it gets thrown away right. rather than just staying on the shelf until somebody buys it so in that respect it makes it much rarer and much more difficult to find both in terms of you know the number of copies that are floating around and well how do you search for it if it doesn't have an isbn right, right. um so in that respect yeah if you're lucky enough to get one of this um and you have the spare cash it's might be worth a purchase. This is one of the books I uh, MOOCs <laughs> that I don't actually own. I know Heath has a copy. I'm assuming you have a copy now. I I do have a copy, but only thanks to the good graces of Picking Duck. Um, ah, okay. Who, yes, I, I was you know talking to him and I mentioned, well, you know, I've been looking all over the place for this one, and he goes, oh well, I got two of those here. You have oh, the other. <laughs> You're a lucky man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's jump over to Daizenshu. Uh, this is the final Daizenshu, number 10, as we kind of usually call it, but the supplemental Daizenshu TV animation part three. We've got an overview page and a translation of the round table. I don't want to say an interview. It's more of a conversation uh, from a bunch of voice actors. This was a great dip into the past. Oh, yes. So this is, keep in mind, this is 1996. They've finished Dragon Ball Z, they've finished the 10th anniversary movie, GT is still going on. Right. Uh, and, but their, sort of their fondest memories are clearly of the earlier series, and they're really sort of dipping back into the past and their fun that they've had over what was then 10 years and change of recording for the series. And you do get to hear quite a bit of Hirotaka Suzuoki, who was 
still alive and kicking and had some pretty funny moments in this actually talking yeah, about Ten Shin Han's character and also his infamous squeaky shoe incident. You'll have to read about <laughs> That's that a good one. good story. I love that stuff. Uh, one of the things that I really took away from this was Nozawa's answer about uh, were there any scenes that left an impression on you? And what she said back here in 1996 was exactly the same thing she said at Animazement just a few weeks ago. The scene in uh, Snow's house when the Red Ribbon Army member bursts in and litters the gunfire all over the place and Goku comes out with the ow that's uh <laughs> man she's she's got her answers I think I said that recently on the show but she knows what she wants to say yes well it's amazing whenever something comes to Masako Nozawa she's incredibly consistent yes she totally. is apparently unfailingly polite and proper and professional and always the other voice actors are unanimous in their respect for her. Mm. So I think that really shines through in this as well. And it's sort of fitting in that respect that she also gets the the last word, if you will, in this particular yeah. <laughs> roundtable. She always does, yeah. But it's good to hear from everybody, including your um, your acquaintance, I guess you could say, Toshio Furukawa. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> having, having just seen him in amazement. Right, right. It's a, a really great roundtable. That's the best word for it. And I, I definitely recommend checking it out. In terms of stuff that's been posted uh, from me, there's only one other thing. It's actually been live for a couple of days. I just haven't done a formal front page post. And that's my review of, finally, the Hero Song of Hope and the Chala Hedchala CD single from Flo. Yes. Now that it's three months later. Well, you know, I'm still technically haven't posted officially the lyrics although they are technically done i've just you know especially when you're doing lyrics there are certain phrasings that you don't they just don't quite sit with you and you want to try and change them and then you get busy with other stuff and right i haven't gotten back to it yet but that's what happened with me with the review is it was mostly done and then i was like oh crap i should go finish that and it's three months later well maybe i can fix it up this time and maybe have you link it from there too i don't know all right we'll figure that out but uh if you do dive into the review section you can go check that out i know we've talked about the songs my overall ending impression is i'm happy with it i, I think it's definitely worth a purchase uh the english version of head to law is kind of hysterical. Julian, something I noted in the review is overall, the translation is pretty good. It's very faithful to the tone, if not the exact lyrics of the original, the, the feeling and kind of the ideas. But there's a few Japanese phrases that are left in there. And I don't understand why they would do that in the English version. I don't know. <laughs> Go check out that review. Uh, Julian, what do you have on deck for us? And I, we make no promises about time frames here, but uh, what do you kind of have in the pipeline? Well, on, in the pipeline, I have uh, the two things from Chozen Shu 4, Masako Nozawa and Akira Toriyama coming up when I have the time. I've got one of them in progress and the other's not started yet, but I kind of know what I want to say sort of thing, like how I want to translate certain things. Gotcha. I've also got a few odds and ends dedications by Akira Toriyama to other manga artists, um, including one for the uh, author of Naruto on the occasion of that series 10th anniversary, sort of going along with, for example, Super Kochi Kame, which... Mm, right, right. They Which you said you uh, you just found in Book Off recently, didn't you? Yes, I, I did, actually. So it's nice having a hard copy of that. Oh, I've always and meant to pick that up. I'm glad I do have that uh, volume 69 with the Apul appearance. That's one of my prized possessions. And I've also gotten around to um, getting a used copy of the first... Chibi Maruko-chan art book, which has a, a little exchange between uh, the author of that series, um, Momoko Sakura, who, um, well, it's a pen name shared mm. with her sort of main character of that series gotcha. and Akira Toriyama. They also have little illustrations that they do of each other's characters. So it's kind of oh, cute. Cute. Very cute. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to do that in the near future. Um, in terms of my job, the students have their final exams for the first term coming up in another week and two days. So I may have some time uh, no promises, of course, but uh, fingers crossed. Uh, just in terms of other dedication stuff, I, I totally remembered. Uh, Dragon Ball SD has, is it a message from Toriyama in there? Yes, there is. And it's uh, actually already translated and we just haven't put it up yet. Okay, so. then. So <laughs> uh, maybe this week uh, I'm taking some more time off myself. Uh, 
uh, these coming days and weeks. So uh, maybe I can catch up on what you do have done, get some okay. things live. There's also the art book for the exhibit, which I don't have up yet, but I could do pretty easily. Uh, what's in there that you want to uh, There's a dedication from Akira ah. Toriyama. Cool, ah, cool. I think I almost called him Akira Koriyama. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's his evil alter ego. <laughs> Wait, what was our old uh, name that we revert? Was it May Yamadori? Oh, yeah. The one that we used for the April Fool's thing, what, nine years ago? Yeah, yeah. What is is it just alternate readings of the kanji? Yes. And we, we flipped around Tori and Yama. Gotcha, gotcha. That was fun. Um, in terms of what Heath has been up to, I don't have him here on the show to tell me. Uh, I know he's uh, been doing a lot of site development work. Uh, I do want to say I, I need to catch up. We had so many great donations over the last couple months. The reason that the site is not dying anymore is twofold because of Heath kind of reprogramming everything from the ground up, um, but also your donations. We're able to put the appropriate resources into what we need. So we don't have those 503 errors anymore. Uh, everything's running smooth. No more caching problems. So it's props to Heath and props to all of you folks. Uh, we haven't had any donations for a while. So I do want to put a reminder out there. That is one of the things that keeps things solid, steady, and still going. If you are interested, hit that link up. That's all I'm going to say about it. And I know I need to get to the donations page. I have all the stuff, uh, you know, who's responsible for which months I do. Ha I have to put that all up. I'm so sorry. I haven't yet, but that's coming very soon. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know Heath has also been slowly making his way through uh, the manga guide and the episode guide, kind of catching up on episodes there. I know he did a new batch of things over in those couple of guides. Uh, and that's always helpful for us when we're doing news updates that refer to specific chapters or specific episodes. We like to uh, point back to those pages but that's tough because that's old archived material and we have this tough balance julian as you know of do i work on something from 2013 or do i work on something from 1986 when both are equally interesting it's tough sometimes right. i know and I, I i got a little bit of um flack well we got a little bit of flack really since it's not my translation of, of for putting up something from 1987 in the midst of 2013 well you know it's got to go up at some point Right. And it, it had the advantage of already being done because it was something that Jake did and was already up on Kanzentai. So, you know, we try to get things out when we can, just to keep that in mind. But, you know, we'll try and keep going forward doing the best of both present and past. Future yes. would be cool too, but um, maybe a little <laughs> bit difficult to pull off. Can you think of any other stuff that's been going on in the site? I'm sure there's other stuff, but without Heath here to uh, kind of cross-reference with. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm not really sure myself. I do see drafts of pages pop up now and then, but I'm not sure how complete they are. And oh, that that's true. Yeah. I was surprised by some of the uh, private drafts I saw pop up. I'm like, oh, Heath's been working on that. That's cool. So we definitely do have surprises coming your way. And there's surprises to all of us sometimes. I think we do a lot of surprising each other. It's like, oh, I did this. That's cool. <laughs> all right. So, um, Julian, it is 12.09 a.m. for you. So I'm going to let you go. Thank you for joining me and kind of talking about all the news, but also what we have going on the site because you're such a huge part of this informational back end here. Oh, that's it's my pleasure, and I really enjoy getting into a lot of this stuff too. You know, it's uh, I especially enjoy some of the older material being. I I don't want to say more varied, but I don't know. There's some surprising stuff. Some some things that people have wondered about for a long time and have sort of been there all along. And I really like getting back into it and pulling it out and making it known you know i know and how many times as much as we love her can we hear nozawa answer the same question with the exact same words over and over and over exactly and there's a lot of nozawa stuff for battle of gods and there's only so many times i can do that without sort of pulling my hair out so. <laughs> there was that one week where she had three interviews all in a row and they all said almost exactly the same thing so yeah so <laughs> please understand as mr iwata says quite often uh that sometimes we need to dive into the past for our own sanity as well as enjoyment so there you go yes all right, man. Tell the kids, where can they find the site? Well, you can find Kanzenshu, as always, on the internet at www.kanzenshu.com. That's K-A-N-Z-E-N-S-H-U-U dot com. You can also find links to our Twitter, to our Facebook page, to 
Uh, do we have Google Plus? Yes, and Heath occasionally updates it. Yes, we do not have Tumblr. Um, yeah. Maybe we should. Is that's what everyone actually uses these yes. days? We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll we'll get a Tumblr page and we'll just put up picture after picture of your cats. How's that? Uh, I took a couple amazing ones yesterday. One is Tyler guarding the top of the stairs with one arm hanging over the stairs mid yawn. It's amazing. And the other is me attempting to play Animal Crossing yesterday with Tyler on top of my lap on one side and Tara approaching me from the other side. So um, all you got to do is think up a funny caption with sort of broken English and there you go. Yep. Done. Consensu Tumblr. Pictures of my cats. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) great. (laughs) What? That's what the internet is. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And thank you much. So for Julian over there, for Heath and Jake and occasionally Mary, and thank you to Joe for coming on and talking about Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z with me this episode. Again, my name is Mike Vegito EX. This was podcast episode 337 here at Kanzen Shu. We'll see you next time for 338. Later, folks. Julian, wrap it up. Konjumo,完全集中,ザポッドキャストを聞いていただいて誠にありがとうございます。次回もお楽しみに。Super Saiyan. No, I'll try again. Saiyan. Yeah, let me decide which one <laughs> to use.